Hi, this is Martin Brennan, Product Manager of Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be looking at how to use the 3D Camera Solver in Mocha to help out with a set extension inside Nuke. So, now that we've saved out our file, we can go across to Nuke and begin the 3D setup. Okay, so here we are inside Nuke, and I'm going to set up my 3D scene to store our camera data. First of all, I'm going to bring in a read node so we can see our footage, so I'm going to press R for the read node, and I'm going to load in that sequence. So we've got our read node there. Now we can't have a 3D scene without a 3D scene node. So I'm going to press tab and type in scene to get our scene node. And then we need to be able to render this scene. So I'm going to bring in a scanline renderer. So I'm going to press tab again and type in scan line. And we can see scanline renderer there. So let's just press return. And we'll pop that down there. And we've got three outputs in here. We've got the background, which I'm going to tie to my footage. And if we bring our output down to the viewer, we can see that footage. And we've got a cam over here. We need a camera for that, and that's going to be tied to our FBX data. So I'm going to press tab and type in camera, like so. And we'll tie that camera to the scanline renderer. So we've got three nodes now. We've got our scene we've got the camera, and we've got the read node. So now we need to feed in that 3D data, so I'm going to need a read geo for that. So I'm going to press tab and type in read geo, and we've got our read geo node there, so that's going to feed into our scene. So this is the first part that we need to bring in our data. So I'm first going to load in the camera, so up here in the camera node, we've got the option to read from file. So we're going to check that node, come over to the file tab, and then open the file. In this case, we want that clip that we saved. So we'll find that just here. And it's going to ask you if you want to destroy the camera data, which we do in this instance, so I'm going to click yes. Next, we want the point data that was generated from our surfaces, which is going to be inside the read geo. So I'm going to double click the read geo, and up in the properties panel, I'm going to just click open. And again, we're going to locate that FBX file. Now, when you load the FBX file for the first time, you won't see anything inside the viewer. This is because we're not dealing with mesh objects, we're dealing with a point cloud. So we want to select point cloud under the object type, and then you'll see our little data points pop up on the screen. So now that we've got our camera data and our point data, we can look at that in 3D. So I'm just going to press tab in the viewer, and if I middle click, we can zoom out to full, and we can see how those points are now projected in space. We've got our road points down here, we've got the trees over on this angle, and we've got the far back hill points over in the distance. And if we scrub our timeline, you can see how that camera is moving and our points remain stationary because they're locked to static objects within the shot. If I go back to my 2D window and I do the same thing, you'll be able to see how those are projected in space. Now if we go back to our 3D window, we can see that our road points are actually below the ground plane up here in 3D. And our camera is sort of angling down a little bit to actually sort of flow along with those null points. Now if we want to align these points with to get back to the zero point, we're going to have to sort of play around with them a bit using a transform geo and an axis. So I'm going to set that up now just so that our middle point is sitting on the origin, just so when we start to insert objects into the scene, it sort of lands a little bit more where we expect it. So I'm just going to space out my nodes a bit here, let's just move the scene up a little bit. And I'm going to move my Regio over to this side and just expand out the camera a little bit, because we're going to be adding a few more things in here. So first of all I'm going to create an axis, so I'm going to type axis into my tab window. And I'm going to link that axis to the camera. I'm also going to link the axis to a transform geo. So I'm going to select my read geo, press tab, and bring up transform geo. And I'm going to link the axis to that point in the transform geo. So I'm going to leave my read geo alone. 
And instead, I'm going to link the axis to the transform geo so that when I manipulate the transform geo, it will move the read geo based off my axis. And when I move the axis, it'll also move the camera. So let's just find our axis point. Double click on that and we can see it here. So now when I move the axis, you can see I'm connecting the camera and the geo using the transform geo all at the same time. So I'm going to start now lining up this middle point to the center using that axis. So I'm going to come over here. Let's just pan across a little bit. And we'll go down to the top first so we can see what we're doing here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm just going to move that back until the middle point of that road is in the top view. And we'll just line that up there. And I'm going to go now to the right view. And we'll zoom out again. And again, I'll move that axis up until we're sitting about in the center. Now, because the axis is pointing down a little bit, I'm going to also rotate my axis here. So I'm going to hold down the command or control key until my rotation window comes up. And I'm just going to rotate that a little bit until that looks about flat. Uh, about there. And then we'll just move that down again. And I'll go back to my top view. So I'm just going to mix around here until we've got that in about the center. So if we go there, top, let's go back to the right view. And we'll zoom in a little bit. So we can see that's still hovering over the surface a little bit, so let's just bring that down. And we'll look at the front. So here we can see it's just off slightly. So we'll just try rotating here just a little bit. And we'll bring that down and over. And that'll probably do. So I'm going to go back to my 3D view now. And we can see that's pretty much right on the origin now. So now everything is aligned correctly using that axis uh, instead of selecting them individually. So now that we've aligned our scene, we can now bring in our 3D card to do the set extension. So to bring in a 3D card, we just press tab, and I'm going to bring in card. And I'm going to extend that card into the scene. Now the card is very, very small here, so I'm going to set the scale quite large. I'm going to set the uniform scale to about 100 to begin with. And we'll adjust that when we've got it in the 2D scene. So first of all, I want to align it to my scene a little bit. So at the moment, it's sitting right on that origin where we've got the road. If I go back to 2D, we can see it's sitting right there in the road. So if I move my camera, you'll see it move backwards as you would expect. But I want it back on the hills here, so I'm going to align it with the middle point of my points back here. So I'm going to go back to my 3D scene. And I'm going to go to vertex mode. So right up in the corner here, we've got this mode called node. And I'm going to go to vertex selection instead. When I'm in vertex selection mode, I'm going to now select this vertice over here. And you'll see the little colored dot appear. And under the card node, we have this thing called the snap menu. So I'm going to click the snap menu. And I'm going to tell it to match the selection position. When I click this, my card will jump over to the vertex position over here. So now when I go back over to 2D, we'll see it popped over in this corner. Now you'll see it's offset slightly, and this is because the transform geo has offset the read geo point. So our vertices are slightly out, but we can adjust that inside our 3D mode uh, by using the translation tools. So in this instance, I actually don't mind because it's actually just behind those hills, which is exactly where I want it. So I'm just going to go back to node selection. Um, let's go back to 2D view and start adjusting where this card is going to go. So first of all, what I want to do is actually feed in a texture so that I can see the city that I want to insert into the background. So I'm going to create a new read geo sorry, a new read node. And I'm going to pull in my map paint. So I'm going to bring in this city.tiff and open that. 
and I'm going to feed that city into my card. Now you can see it's quite small at the moment, so let's just scale up that card quite large. I'm going to make it about a thousand, so that's a bit better. And we want to move that up to behind the hill. So I'm going to actually use the translation here to actually help with that. So first of all, I'm going to click in my Y view and just in front of this 38 here, and I'm going to just scroll upwards to adjust that point. The great thing about Nuke's fields is, is that if you select any of its digits, either to the either side, so if I select to the either side of the 2, scrolling up will adjust the hundreds. If I select to the other side of the 7 here, scrolling upwards will adjust the tens. So I'm going to put that about there, and I'm going to move it across in X a little bit. So I'm going to select to the other side of the 9 here, and just move it across a little bit. And we might move it up just a little bit more in Y about there. So now if we play this back, we can see how that 3D card is actually now moving backwards with the hill along with the correct camera motion. Now obviously we still need to stick it behind the hill, but we'll get to that point in a minute. So we'll just let that uh, cache inside Nuke. And now you can see that city moving and bouncing along with the camera correctly, sitting just behind that hill. And we're getting the right parallax compared to the foreground. So, now that we've got our city in the right spot, we need to now mask out the hill to put the city behind it. For that, we're going to go back to Mocha. Okay, so here we are back in Mocha, and the first thing I'm going to do is just hide my layers. I'm just going to turn off the visibility of those original tracks. And I'm going to start drawing a mask around the edge of the hill here quite accurately so that I can get a nice clean edge for masking out that city. So I'm just going to zoom in here, so let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And we'll come up to the X-Bind tool and start drawing. So I'm going to come down here and just draw a nice clean edge around this hill. Now I'm putting it right on the edge of the hill because I am going to do a little bit of a feathered edge on that uh, exposed edge with the sky. So I'm just going to come all the way down here. And that will probably do. So I'm going to down just zoom out a little bit. And we'll just make a big heavy mask around like that. We don't really care what's masking out down here, so we can keep that a bit rough. We only really care about this edge of the hill line here. Now, we could go ahead and track this, but we've already done a track for our back hill. So I'm going to call this one Hill Mask, and I'm going to link the track to Back Hill. Now, it's not going to be perfectly accurate, so I'm going to have to go in and, and adjust those spline areas, but it'll give us a good starting point. So I'm just going to zoom in here, and we'll see how that's looking. So we'll come through, and that's actually not done a bad job. We've got a little bit of drift at the end there, so we'll be able to fix that up. So I'm going to turn on my splines. I'm going to turn on my mats, and I'm actually going to turn off the spline view so I only see the points. I'm also going to only choose selected tangents so that I can see that edge a little bit better. So we're just going to come in here and adjust. So we have this paint bucket up here, and I'm going to turn the paint bucket off so that we cut out the layer a little bit here. So we can now go in and start adjusting a little bit to see how that's falling off. So we can just flick between those. I'm going to come in here and adjust a little bit here. So I'm just going to get a little bit of an edge on that. Like so. So we've got a bit of an edge there. And I'm going to select these points. And just come down to edge width. And 3 is about right. I'm going to set the edge width to about 3. So we get a bit of a feathered edge off those points. I'm now going to just speed up the recording so you can see the rest of the tweaks and show you the final result.
Okay, so I've tweaked that edge now, and I'm going to now export it out to Nuke so that we can combine it on top of our 3D data. So to do that, we come down to Export Shape Data, and we choose Nuke 6.2 Roto, and I'm going to copy that to the clipboard, and move back over to Nuke. Okay, so we're back over in Nuke now, and I'm going to start using that data. So first of all, I've got my existing read node, so let's just pan up a little bit here. And I'm going to move my viewer down a little bit. And I'm going to paste my roto data to this node. So I'm just going to press Command or Control V to paste that in. And I don't want it to link to my scanline renderer. I just want it to link to a separate point here because we're going to merge the information back over the top. So first of all, we want to actually cut this out. So I'm going to go up to my roto node, double click on that. And I want it to pre-multiply to RGBA, and I want it to output as alpha. Now, in order to merge it across, I'm going to select my rotor node, and I'm going to shift and select my scanline renderer, and then press the M key to bring up the merge node. This will do a merge A over B, with A being my rotor node, and B being the scanline renderer. And we can see now that the Roto node is merged over the top of our 3D data. Now we can see here that my city is slightly too big. We're getting it over here. So we're going to adjust the card just a little bit. So I'm going to come back up to my card node. And I might bring that scale down a little bit. I'm going to bring it down to about 990. Then we might want to bring it down even further. Let's try 600. That's too small. So we'll adjust a little bit more. 800, 900. That's probably about right. And then I'm going to just tweak those X values again. So I'm going to bruise my translation and bring it across a bit. And we'll use the Y tool to bring it down a little bit. And we can probably scale it up a little bit more now but that we've moved that. So I'm going to try bringing it back up to 950, 970. And that probably looks about right. So we'll just move it up just a little bit more. So it's sitting about there. So now if I just close my roto node, so we hide the lines, and I go ahead and play back, we can see now that that edge of the roto is merged over our 3D cards, and we're getting a nice seamless transition between the 3D card and the roto in the foreground. So that's the basics of using the 3D camera solver to do set extension with cards inside Nuke. If we want to clean this up, we'd want to disable our read geo so that we don't see our little floating points. And we can also add color correction and a little bit of blur into the background here to just make it fit the scene a little bit better. For more information on the camera solver or any of the features inside Mocha Pro, go to our website at imagineersystems.com. This has been Martin Brennan, Product Manager for Imagineer Systems.